by the early part of this century, people were growing increasingly comfortable with sharing the artifacts of culture. And then something else happened, and it happened almost entirely by accident. People began to pool knowledge. They began to share, and they began to pool knowledge. Now, back in 2000, a gentleman by the name of Jimmy Wales was working on a project. He was trying to create an encyclopedia, and he hired a whole bunch of bright people to write lots of entries on this encyclopedia. And after a year, he'd gotten about 400 articles written, even though he had lots of bright people writing. And the project was about to fail. And one of the other people that he was working with said, you know what? What if we open up this encyclopedia so that anyone can write articles in this encyclopedia? What if we do that? And that's where the idea for Wikipedia came from. Because it, although it started very, very slowly, a few people were really interested in the idea that they could contribute to an encyclopedia. They could actually contribute to creating a basis of knowledge. Now, here's something that we didn't know before Wikipedia. What we didn't know is that knowledge seems to have almost a gravitational quality to it. That is, the more knowledge you build up in a place, the more knowledge it tends to attract. So, there, when there were a few articles in Wikipedia, Wikipedia grew kind of slowly. But Wikipedia continued to grow slowly, and it grew all right, so that, you know, by the end of the first year, they'd gone from 400 articles to about 14,000 articles. That's not bad. Children's Encyclopedia has about 14,000 articles in it. But it kept growing, and it kept growing. And by the time that you got to the end of the second year, it had gone from 14,000 articles to 60,000 articles. And that's a lot of articles. Now, it's not as many as the Encyclopedia Britannica. But by the end of the next year, it had about as many articles as the Encyclopedia Britannica. That's 250,000 articles. And it continued to grow. And it continued to grow till today. And I haven't checked recently, but I believe it's around 2.8 million articles in the English language in Wikipedia. And so Wikipedia is literally, and has literally been, with such this gravitational pull of this knowledge, has been sucking the knowledge outside of our heads. It's been copying, it's been using the internet as the copy machine. It's been copying all of the knowledge that's outside of our heads. And it's been placing it into this big and growing public pool. Now, of course, the internet and Wikipedia aren't a black hole. The knowledge doesn't disappear. When it gets copied, the thing that happens is it becomes absolutely available to absolutely everyone else. So the interesting thing is, is that not only is this knowledge attracted to itself, but we ourselves, we find ourselves attracted to this shared pool of knowledge. Just as much as this knowledge attracts itself, it attracts us to it. Why? Why is that? Why are we attracted to Wikipedia? Why do we find Wikipedia exciting? Well, it's very simple. It's because it helps us make better decisions. All right? We can be better informed about almost anything under the sun. I want you to consider this. With Wikipedia, the most ignorant person has the opportunity to be as intelligent as the most intelligent author of Wikipedia if they choose to. That's the thing that Wikipedia has created for every single one of us. And so this pooling of knowledge has created a new thing, a new thing that I call hyperintelligence. And suddenly, everyone everywhere is functioning at a much higher level because everyone now has instantaneous and pervasive access to the same accurate body of knowledge. And you know what? Like it or not, there's a pressure to use Wikipedia. If you choose not to use it, and you come up against someone who is using it in a contest that isn't simply a battle of brute force, that person who is using Wikipedia is going to win out over you. In other words, in a battle of wits, the hyper-intelligent person is always going to win. Now, those aren't my rules. Those are Darwin's rules. And that's a selection pressure. That's the way, if you have two competing battles, the side that has the best resources, the side that is best fit to the environment, is going to win. And we have a selection pressure on us in the 21st century to stay informed, to stay current, 
to stay intelligent. So those who can use Wikipedia are going to thrive, and those who don't won't get the chance to play the game. Now, This isn't something nebulous. This isn't something theoretical. This is something that's happening right now. There's a new website that's launched. It's called Patients Like Me. And it's a place where people pool and share knowledge around illnesses and their treatments. It's a relatively restricted range of illnesses right now. But it's hyperintelligence around disease and health. And this is a new thing because it is designed to increase the intelligence of everyone who's participating in it. It's designed so that everyone who participates in it can lead a healthier and longer life. Now, this isn't just theoretical blue sky thinking about, ooh, hyperintelligence, wouldn't it be great if? This is right here, and this is right now, and this is what happens when you pool intelligence. Sharing knowledge in this way, in this pooled way that we can do with the sharing machinery of the network, sharing knowledge is probably the most important innovation in human history since the invention of the printing press 500 years ago. Now, I could go on, because this is not the only example. We have iTunes University, or university, Stanford University, one of the best universities in the world, is taping every single one of their lectures from every single one of their professors and offering it freely online for anyone who wants to download them. And you've got YouTube University, which is doing the same thing. And you've got all of these different sites where people are offering up freely and sharing what they know. Now, Wikipedia led the way in this, but it is hardly the only participant. It's all working everywhere. It's all about learning to share, and it's about improving what we're doing because someone else shared with us. Sharing makes us smarter. And we're all sharing more and more, which means we're all getting a lot more smart. And we're all getting a lot more smart a lot more quickly. And while that really sounds absolutely wonderful and happy and peachy and keen, it actually means there's a very bumpy ride ahead of us.